flipping cold out tonight. It's coming up to my studio. I lit the fire earlier, but then I got waylaid and I think, yeah. It's like it's gone out. That's a bit of a nuisance. Uh. Put that light on as well. Oh no. Oh, that's it. I can turn this. It's called a headlamp, but I've got it in my hand. <laughs> oh, hang on. I can't. Oh, I can't see to do it now. Oh, there goes the dog. And the fox has been around a lot lately. Excuse me, I'm just trying to figure out how to turn this off again. There it is. Hold that for about five seconds and it'll go off. See? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do a bit more on this painting. So it's, it's almost finished. It's not. It's not terribly good. Not what I wanted. But I'll. I'll get there. She's, um, don't know if you can hear her out there, she's barking at her. Well, it could be anything actually. There's so much wildlife down the bottom of the paddock. It could be a fox, could be a badger, could be a mink, I mean, or, or there's um, a great big polecat looking thing that, um, we know, it's, we know it's there because uh, we've caught them on uh, George's camera trap. Uh, so she could, that could be anything she's barking at, but I'm quite, it's quite nice to know that the, all the wildlife is about. And, uh, the neighbours don't seem to mind that she barks, but she doesn't, doesn't bark for ages, but she just lets me know that there's something about. And of course, you know, that's what she is. She's a German Shepherd. She's a guard dog. She's protecting me. She's protecting everyone around here. We have had one or two um, intruders of the human variety. Funny, isn't it? The human variety intruders are far worse than the wild animals. And that says something, doesn't it? Funny old world. It's a funny old world. I was watching something on YouTube just now. <laughs> I'll have to tell you about it because it made me laugh. Um, hang on. Yeah, there's this young lady. She's, uh, unfortunately, she's in a hospital now. Um, she she was making a living, a very good living. I, I think, I think it's about, she was making a living of about two hundred thousand pounds a year. And what she, I hope that will go. Yeah, what she was doing was. I want to tell you this now. I'll tell you. We're all grown ups here. What she does is <coughs> she farts into a glass jar and then she puts the top on and she sends the glass jar off to people who pay good money for her farts. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh really because she, poor girl's in hospital now. Apparently, she's um, overdone her sphincter muscle. <laughs> anyway, she can't do it anymore, so she's in hospital and she's 
she's having to retire. <laughs> she's having to retire early. But yeah, it's a funny old world, isn't it? Um, I've got a few jars around here, actually. I could do with making a few bob. <laughs> oh. But anyway, it does show that she was taking her job seriously. You know, she wasn't getting getting anyone else to pipe into the jar for her. She was doing it herself. Unfortunately, at the cost of a nice tight sphincter muscle. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you because I couldn't believe it. It's funny, isn't it? I, what, what we like as humans, we're, we're supposed to be the intelligent people. We're the intelligent ones. I mean, it seems to me the animals are the ones who've got it right. The real animals. <sighs> anyway, I'm going to get on with this painting. I'll let you see what's happened so far. It's a nightmare one. Uh, once I've done this, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. Good. Actually, I'll say I'm going to do something a bit more fun, but I've got in my head to do a painting about... Uh, I was in prison. <laughs> this is true, honestly. I was in a... This is another prison. This is it. I can't even remember which one it was. I've been in so many, but it was either um, Wandsworth or Wormwood Scrubs. I think it was Wandsworth. I was on remand or oh, something or other I'd been up to. And um, the one day sitting in your cell, you're sitting in your cell for 23 hours a day, almost, you know, you, you got out your cell to go and get your breakfast, your breakfast tray. And then you took the tray back to your your cell and you, you ate your breakfast in there. Um, well, oh yeah, and one day, the screw came, I was going to say the screw knocked on the door. <laughs> they didn't tend to knock. I mean, I'm talking about, um, what am I talking about? Early 70s, when being in, in the neck, you know, it was, it was quite tough. Yeah, anyway, the screw, came to the cell, he didn't knock on the door. He says, said, do you want to do some work? Um, get yourself some bit of money, tobacco, tobacco. Well, I said, yes. And so um, I went, went to work this workshop and there was all these guys. Well, it wasn't all these guys, it was about a dozen, I suppose. Sewing mail bags. So, um, I had to go, so in Melbourne, sitting next alongside some of these real tough lifers and that, gangsters, some of them. Um, one bloke, I won't give his name, a real London gangster. And uh, we were sewing mailbags. Yeah, you, know, you couldn't, you see these, these, um, these tough guys you know, and you know, oh, they're really hard, but there they are sitting there, sewing them mailbag, doing them all right, because you had to get, you had to sew them 12 inch, uh, 12 stitches to the inch, you had to get them absolutely correct. Yeah, sewing the mailbags, so they were probably, <laughs> probably the same mailbags they'd later go on to rob. But yeah, that's quite interesting. So I was thinking of doing a painting of sitting there in the prison, so in mail bags, that might be quite interesting. Uh, funny thing is, as an add on to that story is, when I got out of Nick, I got a job. Don't tell anyone. I got a job on the railways as a guard. And guess what I was looking after? <laughs> yeah, I was looking after all the bags full of mail. I could have made a fortune, but I was a reformed character by then. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. I just thought I'd look in and let you know what was going on. There's a little pipe. Some got it for me. Uh, some 
some uh, auction. Oh uh, no, some yeah, an auction house. I think you said he got it from. Oh, I've just stuck a bit of paper in there because the stem was a bit loose. Look, somebody's adapted it to. They've cut it down in size. Handy for this sort of um, painting operations. Yeah, I think I can't make quite make out the name. I think it says. Hang on. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to show you the name. Tom, Tom Cobbles or Cobble or Cobbs. And they're from England. No, Tom Cobbs Extra. Something like that. Anyway, I'll let you get on and I'll have a go at making this picture look a bit more interesting. It's nearly there. I won't do too much more to it, but I don't think the wolf is aggressive enough looking, not frightening me enough. Uh, so I'll carry on. Anyway, take care, everyone. Don't pay any attention to me. I'm a bit silly. See you later. Bye.